I am sometimes amazed that Call of Duty still exists today. By 2018, the series was far removed from its heyday, where every release broke records and received acclaim for its robust multiplayer and well-written story modes. After becoming distracted by the advanced movement craze from 2014 to 2016, the series tried to become more grounded again in 2017 with a return to World War II, but stumbled in its execution in more ways than one. While many hadn't been impressed with Sledgehammer's return to boots on the ground, Treyarch's next injury was considered by some to be a safe bet. While its campaign had been miserable, those that play only for multiplayer and zombies modes had enjoyed what had been offered to them in Black Ops 3. So when Black Ops 4 was announced, not many were surprised. What was surprising was the fact that Black Ops 4 would be omitting the campaign mode. To those that felt the series had strayed too far from its roots, this seemed like the final nail in the coffin for the series. I was certainly one of those people at the time, and still look at this title with similar disdain that I do for its predecessor. However, that puts me in a tricky spot for this video. This series is supposed to be discussing the story campaign modes in each game, and if Black Ops 4 doesn't have one, then why cover it? If anything, this being the one and only Call of Duty game to not have a campaign is all the more reason to look over this one. In lots of ways, I feel like Black Ops 4 is a microcosm of everything this series does wrong, and it's a perfect example of how far it can stray from what it's supposed to be. My main focus in this series is to look over the game's story, and by not having a campaign, this game has one of the biggest stories to tell. While it's going to be different from the norm, let's dig into this game as a whole and discover the shifting priorities at work here. We'll start with the game's premise and setting, as I can't quite call it a story. Taking place in between Black Ops 2 and 3, this fourth game centers on the mysterious Project Blackout. This project was started by Savannah Mason, the granddaughter to Alex and daughter to David. So props for actually making this Black Ops story and tying it to the Mason family, unlike Black Ops 3. So Savannah has hired several soldiers and other military contractors from around the world to help her stop threats that lurk in the shadows. The only thing is, Savannah is what lurks in the shadows. She's got some underhanded scheme going, and when her Black Ops agents get too close to sniffing out the truth, she tries to have them killed. They manage to survive and unite to take her down, and that's it. These little tidbits of story are only unveiled through short cinematics during the specialist training missions. Now, who are the specialists? The specialists are the playable characters in multiplayer, who each has a special ability unique to their character. They were introduced in Black Ops 3, and now we see slightly younger and lower tech versions of their characters in this game. Overall, I don't hate the idea of having your character from multiplayer be the protagonist of your campaign. It helps you learn more about them and figure out which ones your favorites are to play in multiplayer. The obvious issue with these training missions is that they're not a full campaign. And I won't really knock them for that. They do the job of teaching you the game, and they do it well. Whatever shortcomings they may have aren't really important because they're not regular missions, they're just tutorials. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, why isn't this a full campaign, instead just some training missions with cutscenes attached? The answer to me seems obvious. Following Black Ops 3, Treyarch stopped caring about the campaign mode altogether. And I kind of understand why. Despite the campaign being atrocious, Black Ops 3 sold just fine. More than fine. Out of the advanced movement titles, it easily sold the best. From Treyarch's perspective, why put the time and energy into something no one's going to complain about anyway? It's been a joke for years that people rarely play the campaign, while I think that number has gone up a bit in recent years, it's still a low number of people compared to the vast majority that just play the multiplayer. With Call of Duty, some people will play the campaign, while everyone plays the multiplayer. The reverse is rarely true. So if you're Treyarch and you know the story mode's player base is so small, why keep supporting it? I'll tell you why you should, and that's to give the game a recognizable identity. Why does Activision release a new Call of Duty game every year? The answer is obvious, to print money. But how do you do that so effectively? Do you give the player something to entice them into playing? For Call of Duty, that's usually in the multiplayer grind and suite of weapons to play with. But how do the developers go about deciding what should be in the game? That's where we get to the setting of the game and the excuse that Activision has for releasing a new game every year. That's why the setting is important, as it gives Activision something new to sell and informs every other aspect of production going forward. And with your setting comes the story. Now, I'll admit that not every game needs to have a three-act structured campaign to have a story. Sometimes just having a premise is enough to make your game work. Look at a game like Helldivers 2. No real overarching story other than your super Earth and you're defending your territory from alien bugs and warbots and all the satirical subtext that comes with it. There's no plot there, but the story that the setting establishes is great. Now, I've just set up how ditching a single-player campaign could work for Call of Duty, so this game not having one shouldn't be a problem, right? Well, that's incorrect. 
And that's because Treyarch cared so little for the Black Ops story at this point that the setting isn't very good. Now, while the story has some interesting ideas that could work if the game were to be expanded, there are some big flaws that prevent this from happening. The biggest issue is, in my opinion, this game is Black Ops in name only at this point. Yes, we've got some old characters popping in like Mason Woods, and we have connections to the extended family, but the details are so crazy that they go far beyond the grounded roots this series started in. Let me explain. If you'll recall, this series doesn't start with Black Ops 1, but with World at War. That game is a gritty depiction of war that doesn't hold any punches and keeps an overall grounded and serious tone throughout. Black Ops 1 was a perfect follow-up. Set 20 years later during the Cold War, it too told a grounded story about the dirty things that our governments can sign off on behind closed doors that we don't know about. While the brainwashing made the story a little trippy, it was still accurate for the area as brainwashing was something being experimented with at the time. While Black Ops 2 then jumps to the future, it again grounds the story by making it a generationally personal story and beginning to ask how far technology will be implemented into warfare. Black Ops 3 attempted to follow up on this, but with such a jumbled mess, it ended up being about nothing and everything at the same time. Outcome. Train go boom. So where does this leave us with Black Ops 4? Well, in case things weren't stupid enough after what Black Ops 3 put us through, 4's story involves Mason, Woods, Reznov, and Menendez being resurrected from the dead somehow. I wish I was joking. In cutscenes, you can hear conversations between Samantha Mason and Menendez, and audio files reveal that she may have brainwashed Woods to be in love with her? Sometime later, Woods presumably managed to overcome it and has Alex hidden away somewhere trying to get him deprogrammed. And apparently this isn't some simulation, they're actually real, and this is happening in canon to the, to the story. Really. What a load of bullsh. It's crazy to me that the story for the Black Ops saga went this off the rails given where the series started. It reminds me of that CW show Riverdale that no one watched except ironically and started as a uh, what if Archie was a murder mystery and somehow ended up involving witchcraft and time travel by the end. So how did Black Ops end up in such a crazy place? Well, this wasn't the original version of the game's setting and story, believe it or not. According to reporting from Jason Schreier, the original campaign for this game was going to be a more direct prequel to Black Ops 3, setting up the events for the game better and explaining factions such as the CDP. The gameplay would have been a hybrid online single-player experience where teams of two would choose which faction to fight for and complete missions together, helping to tip the scales of the war between the Winslow Accords and the CDP. By Christmas 2017, it seemed like this is what was going to ship in the box, but when Treyarch staff returned to work in January 2018, they learned the mode had been canned. With less than a year to go until the game was released, let alone revealed, Treyarch had to move fast to build a replacement mode. What we got was obviously the specialist training, and it wouldn't surprise me if that was already in progress in some form prior to this decision. But what ultimately got the media attention and marketing spotlight was Blackout. If Black Ops 4 wasn't chasing industry trends enough at this point, incorporating hero shooter aspects into multiplayer, then this was really the low point of how far they'd stoop to capitalize off of what was popular. It's crazy to think that the Battle Royale genre has been around for 8 years or so now. PC games like DayZ and H1Z1 were some of the first games to incorporate Battle Royales into their games, quickly followed by the release of the standalone Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, or PUBG for short. By late 2016, PUBG was all the rage on streaming sites such as Twitch, and companies were beginning to take notice of the feedback. The first game to really capitalize on this trend was Fortnite. What was originally a tower defense third-person shooter that would have died on release quickly shifted angles and released their own battle royale mode. Between having a cartoony, more kid-friendly aesthetic and also, from what I can tell, being the first free battle royale, it's a small wonder it ended up blowing up the way it did. Activision clearly saw an opportunity here, and thus Blackout was born. I don't have a lot to say about this mode. As a first attempt at a battle royale for COD, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. Compared to its successor Warzone, it's very bare bones and a product of its time. The map is nice, but the time to kill is so quick, even with armor, that a match can be over in seconds, even with good loot. I know that's a bit of the point behind a battle royale mode, but it seems too quick for my liking. And looking at the overall package we got, Black Ops 4 feels even less like a new Black Ops title and feels more like Call of Duty Mobile on console. And that certainly doesn't help the game standing all these years later either. Ditching a campaign mode in favor of chasing a trend didn't sit too well with many people at the time. It also doesn't help that I don't think this game looks very good at all. Compared to other Call of Duty games that came out before and after it, you can tell how rushed this one was because of the downgrades in the graphics department. 2017's game World War II was a great looking game at the time, and honestly still is. But part of the reason it looks so good is because Sledgehammer had the time to make sure the graphics were up to snuff. Comparing cutscenes for the two games is laughable. I'm not too surprised overall, as Treyarch has traditionally been the least technically minded studio, at least in my eyes. 
The sound design, for instance, is atrocious. Between Black Ops 1 and now, many of the weapons and equipment use the same exact sound effect over and over and over. Just listen to the care package sound between games. That's the same sound effect used in four separate games over the course of eight years. I think it's fine for the older games, but could they really not go out and get some new sound effects when they move to the PS4 and Xbox One? To me, this is a prime example of showcasing where Treyarch's real priorities lie. It's certainly not the single player as we've discussed, it's not the tech to make the game look and sound good, and I don't really think it's in the multiplayer either. No, Treyarch's real priority following the release of Black Ops 2 has been zombies. Treyarch may have innovated the multiplayer in Black Ops 2 with the Pick 10 system, but after that, any meaningful contributions to that mode. They introduced the specialist in Black Ops 3, but that wasn't really a concept they came up with on their own, instead borrowed from the burgeoning hero shooter genre. Really think about it, aside from zombies, what was the last notable thing Treyarch did for Call of Duty after 2012? The answer is nothing. They've coasted by ever since while focusing on zombies, which to me is almost an insult to the franchise at this point and betrays the core tenets of what made the original games great. But let's back up a moment. I've mentioned it a handful of times when relevant, but haven't really brought it up that much. So what is the zombies mode? Well, in case you're unaware, the Zombies mode is a four-player co-op horde mode, the first included in World at War as a bonus mode unlocked after completing the campaign. For what it's worth, I don't mind these early Zombies modes. They're a harmless little time waster for you and your friends, and the mode is simple enough that anyone can enjoy it. My issue with Zombies is when it stopped being just a fun little side mode and began drawing more focus away from other areas of the game. My biggest point of contention is the quote-unquote story of Zombies. In each level is a series of secret challenges and easter eggs that if the player completes them can unlock hidden story content and extra upgrades. Early on, hiding these little story beats inside each level wasn't a terrible thing as it gave hardcore players who really liked the gameplay something to do and a challenge to complete. As the mode continued, the zombie story began to get more obvious focus and was more obviously at the forefront of every new map. I tried detailing what the story is even about, but I have no clue because of how convoluted and stupid it is. There's something about other dimensions and ancient demons and time travel and a whole bunch of ridiculous nonsense that doesn't belong in a series like Call of Duty. Like, look at what's going on right now. There's some sort of weird cult cheering from the stands as we fight in a gladiatorial arena and get chased by zombies and other eldritch monsters. What about any of this has to do with war? Not to mention that most of these easter eggs you have to look up on your own to figure out, as they are actually hidden. It's one thing if they want to add a story in zombies, it's another if they do so and hide it from us. It's just another way the mode, like the Black Ops games themselves, have gone off the rails over time. Early on, the mode actually made sense and tied into the game's fine. The original name of the mode was Nazi Zombies, as you mostly fought undead Nazis. You run around and recycle areas from World at War's campaign cobbled together into one map, since it was originally just a fun side project during the game's development. I think that's great. Black Ops 1 continued the Nazi Zombies storyline, but also threw in the new Map 5 to tie into the Cold War setting of the campaign. And to make things enjoyable, you played as caricatures of historical figures. Zombies. Gentlemen, at times like these, our capacity to retaliate must be, and has to be massive, to deter all forms of aggression. Gentlemen, lock and load. Viva la revolución! Any last words, Mr. President? Yes, Jack. Any superlative words of inspiration for our humble troops? Do not pray for easy lives, my friends. Pray to be stronger men. To me, this is what zombies should be if it's included in a Call of Duty game. Something that ties into the main setting and themes of the game while still acting as a fun arcadey horde mode. Running around as a caricature of JFK or Fidel Castro spitting out one-liners about the difference of capitalism versus communism is great and brings a lot of laughs. Black Ops 2 and 3, though, take the mode and the story way too seriously. Not only does the mode have its own unique setting separate from the main games, but all the characters are too self-serious and boring to listen to. I think this is why many didn't like the transit mode from Black Ops 2, as the new characters introduced just didn't have the personality to match the -the over-the-top caricatures in the prior two games. Like, why am I playing as a tentacle monster in the 1940s here? Black Ops 3 is set in the future, so none of this makes any sense. What does any of this have to do with Call of Duty? How far has the series fallen to the point it's practically lost all of its identity? If someone were to watch gameplay of the original games or Call of Duty 4 and then you show them gameplay of getting chased by zombies in an arena, you probably wouldn't think they were from the same series. And what's worse about the zombies mode in Black Ops 4 specifically is that I actually kind of find it fun. 
I knew I'd eventually touch on this topic, and so I made sure to capture some footage from at least one zombies map in all the Treyarch games to prep. World at War and Black Ops were simple and fun on your own, but Black Ops 2 and 3 clearly required a full party to play with to make any headway whatsoever, and so I didn't spend much time with them. So imagine my surprise when Black Ops 4 added the ability to add bots to your lobby. Now someone who's playing solo actually has a chance to get somewhere without being overrun at round 5. Because of this, I actually spent an hour or two playing the maps included with the base game, and I have to say, I actually enjoyed myself. Even without playing the tutorial, the game design was intuitive enough that I was able to figure out all the new abilities and map layout on my own solo before I even knew you could add in bots. I also think there's some decent variety in settings here. Instead of being a yet another set of rundown, dilapidated buildings to run around in, only one of those is like that this time. There's the Alcatraz map, which I'm pretty sure is a remake from the Black Ops 2 days, the Gladiatorial Arena map, and then the one on the cruise ship. I think I like the cruise ship map the best, as imagine my surprise when the opening cutscene of this map revealed that it wasn't just some random cruise ship, it's actually the Titanic. That actually made me a little excited. I'm not a huge fan of the zombie genre in general, which is another reason why I have an issue with it being in Call of Duty. But making an alt-history Titanic overrun by zombies? The rule of cool is just too strong sometimes, and I couldn't help but enjoy myself. It also helps that there are some cool nautical-themed weapons you can get to help blow up the zombies. And unlike some of the other characters from 2 and 3, these new ones introduced in Black Ops 4 are actually pretty fun. Treyarch is taking a page out of old pulp novels and adventure movies and has created a vibe I feel like is really similar to the 90s Brendan Fraser mummy movie. There's quirky characters, lots of fun attitude, and sometimes they take the words right out of my mouth. Of course they catch fire. At this point, why would they not? I think it says a lot that me, as someone who just spent the last few minutes telling you why I don't like the zombies mode in Call of Duty, ended up liking the zombies mode in Black Ops 4. Playing through the various iterations of the mode, it's clear that Treyarch has a passion for creating it and has come up with something actually pretty cool at times. So I have to ask, why is it in a Call of Duty game? And beyond that, why is it in so many Call of Duty games? Treyarch aren't the only ones with a claim to zombies. Sledgehammer has used the mode for all of the games that they've made because they're creatively bankrupt and couldn't come up with their own third mode, and Infinity Ward put zombies into Infinite Warfare, something I'd say could be their lowest point as a studio. Clearly, Zombies is popular, and clearly it gets a lot of attention from the devs for it to be its own special and unique mode when it's used. So why isn't it its own game at this point? If anything, Zombies and Call of Duty both are being held back by being combined together. If Treyarch were unshackled from having to develop a multiplayer mode alongside their Zombies offering every year, think of what they could do. The possibilities and innovations to the formula they could come up with could be limitless. It's not like Activision doesn't have the teams to support this change given how many work on the franchise nowadays. I don't think Modern Warfare Zombies and Modern Warfare 3 really worked, but a more open world zombie experience could work if it was given enough time and attention and not thrown together at the last moment like Modern Warfare Zombies clearly was. To me, Black Ops 4 seems like a zombie's first experience given how little attention every other aspect of the game seems to have received comparatively. Despite actually enjoying the mode more than I thought I would, I think this paints Black Ops 4 in a very negative light, and it all comes back to what I was talking about earlier. By this point in time in 2018, Call of Duty had strayed so far from its roots it was almost unrecognizable as a franchise. It's not so much a series learning to evolve as much it is a series completely forgetting itself and becoming something almost entirely different. While Infinity Ward got things back on track in a big way with Modern Warfare 2019, this has been an issue that has plagued Call of Duty ever since. Look at the Season 3 opening cutscene for Modern Warfare 3. It's a total mess. It begins with a modern military aesthetic, but quickly drops it for a multicolored animal skin nonsense. This drive to sell as many skins as possible to compete with games like Fortnite is killing the visual identity of multiplayer games across the board. And unfortunately, it's not a problem unique to Call of Duty. Battlefield has done it. Rainbow Six Siege has done it. Halo has done it. More and more, games are sacrificing their visual identity and breaking their immersion to sell out and nickel and dime their player base. It was kind of cute at first, I'll admit. Seeing one of my squad mates pull up in a big pink truck in Warzone was kind of funny back in the days of Warzone 1. But what made it funny is that it wasn't the norm and felt out of place while everyone else was adhering to the dress code, so to speak. And back in the Warzone 1 days, many of the crossover skins made sense. I totally get John McLean and Rambo in Call of Duty. But if you log on now, the intrusive skins are everywhere, and the crossovers don't even make sense anymore. Oh dear. Pennywise just appeared in the store. You're joking. <laughs> like actual pen, because that's the thing. It could be actual Pennywise. Oh my. Okay, it's it's not, but it's it's a it's a it's a dollar store version of Pennywise. But yeah, it's totally yeah. supposed to be Pennywise. Oh my gosh. 
voice at home. <laughs> oh, oh dear. While Black Ops 4 can't solely be blamed for this lingering problem as it's really Activision who's at fault, this is when these practices really started to show themselves after popping up here and there in the past. Snoop Dogg announcer packs and ghosts and glowing weapon skins and loot crates don't seem like a huge deal compared to Nicki Minaj character skins you can use in multiplayer. That may be more of a rebuke on Call of Duty as a whole than less on Black Ops 4, but it's easy to make the connection. To me, Black Ops 4 is just too perfect an example for all the things that COD gets wrong, and I think the overwhelming positive response to Modern Warfare 2019 the following year is a good indication about how many feel about this game. Thankfully, 2018 marked the end of Call of Duty's five-year dark period. There's plenty to be said about the issues that certain games have after this point, but overall I think the franchise has been on the upswing ever since. As for Treyarch though, this is where we leave them for this retrospective series. As of this writing, Black Ops 3 remains the last campaign that the team ever produced since 4 didn't have one. While future Black Ops titles would indeed have single player story modes, a new team would have to step in to carry on Treyarch's legacy. Oh, you know what? I just figured out something. All of this is symbolic for the fact that Treyarch would never make a campaign after this and Raven Software would have to do it for them. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs>